baptism. Um, thank you. Uh, I've been a member of this community for about 20 years now. Um, I'm also graduating from King State College this semester. I've uh, been to a been to every pumpkin fest since 1997, and uh, my mother even helped run the festival when she was working for the hospital. Um, yeah, I remember breaking the record. I remember breaking the record. I remember bringing back home again. And uh, you know, it's, it's safe to say I have a deep connection to all King State. No, I'm just going to lift the microphone. Um, Yeah, you got that. I can, I can hold it. I can hold it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, it's safe to say I have a deep involvement in all the Keene State College, the city of Keene, and the public Festival itself. Um, I wasn't going to speak tonight, but I was uh, motivated by the comments I heard um, in hearing a resounding number of people asserting blame in one direction or another or standing up to defend one involved party or another. That's not how problems are solved. Problems are solved by accepting responsibility and fixing your mistakes. So here's our responsibility. Keene State was at heart problem part of Keen State was part of the problem in the riots that resulted that night. No more it was other schools, no more we weren't involved. Of the sixteen arrests following the riots, nine were Keene State College students. We are part of the problem. So is the college. So is the city. So is Let It Shine. We all have an investment in what happened, and we all have some faults. It's about time we start recognizing what we've done, fix our mistakes, and fix what we've broken. Thank you. I, I like the look in Jay's eye when I walk out. I'm harmless. <laughs> Laura. I'm actually switching it up on upstairs. Oh, upstairs. <laughs> So uh, my name is Laura Bryant, I'm a faculty here at um, Keene State College as well as a resident of Keene and a mother of a six-year-old who absolutely adores the Pumpkin Fest. And so um, I also wasn't going to speak, but I wanted to also provide my perception because it's a little bit different than what I've been hearing about. Uh, there's been lots of talk about alcohol, there's also been lots of talk about um, the value of the festival. But one perception that surprised me while I was walking to my car, because I've parked on campus, um, one of the privileges of the faculty here, um, with the closed parking. But one of the perceptions that I had, and it wasn't that, I didn't see my students, I didn't see one of my own students around there, but it amazed me that as we're trying to get back to our car and we're seeing the right place, having no idea what was going on because we were enjoying the festival, was the fact that I could hear the chants of police go home, police go home. I could hear people that were saying, oh my gosh, there's a mom here with her child. And it was just amazing that I was in this situation and while they were um, one you know, element was upset about police presence. And I was kind of disturbed by the fact that there seems to be a growing movement, and it's not just in Keene, it's across the nation of anti-police, anti-establishment, anti-government. You know, we need to have our rights and our freedom and our rights to party, and you can't take that away from us. Whether it's fueled by alcohol, whether it's fueled by something else, it's an additional problem that nobody has talked about that when I'm going down the street and I'm hearing students, why are the police here? Why are they in riot gear? And they're just antagonizing it. They just want us to fight back or do whatever. And I'm hearing these comments as I'm walking to my car. And I was amazed by them, where a part of me is sitting there saying, I am so glad the police are here so I can get to my car safely. But there's just this different perception of what it means to be safe and kept safe and that I think that somehow that that is a, an entirely different perception on the event that hasn't been talked about tonight. And I have no idea what the solution is because I don't think it's just a key, I don't think it is a key issue. I think it's people from outside, social media, transparency. And I, one, want to commend the law enforcement. I think they did an outstanding job and I want to reiterate that. And I felt safe even as I'm hearing all this in the Thank you, Larry.
We've heard from 39 people. That's pretty amazing to squeeze that into two hours. And I'll, I'll share with you just a couple of reflections. What, what a remarkable privilege and blessing for me to be part of this community. I offer my compliments to all of you. You, you, you exceeded my expectations. It's a difficult issue, extraordinarily difficult. Many different perspectives, variable emotions, and like Daniel McCollum, I think all of us are wondering why. Uh, it, it, we have to contemplate it and make sure we why. I love the person who said, it's about we, it's not about they. I sense from this group, from this room, from those 39 folks who spoke and all of you who listened, that a real sense of passion, commitment, a shared vision, deep concern, and a desire to identify a clear path forward, a path to a brighter, vibrant, safe, and livable future here in Keene. I just want to comment on three or, or observe three particular people who testified. I thought Nick Tornatori gave a wonderful, stupid perspective, heartfelt. And Rose, if you ever want to come on over to the we've got a place for you. And to Mr. Carl, 88 years, a veteran of Okinawa, what a wonderful statement about our responsibility. Thank you for that. And I want to remind everybody that the council, the mayor, will be accepting comments in writing until December 12th. And I want to thank the mayor, city manager, council members, President Hewitt, citizens, Keene State faculty, staff, and especially the students. Thank all of you, and I want to express to you a fear I now have. It's that all night long, the little voice in my head will be saying, you have one more minute to sleep. 